Minnesota program. And John Dvorak is in the studio, the manager of the Rice County Fair. Talk about the Rice County Fair. John is going to be here before you know it. It's getting nice outside. It sure is, boy. I tell you, this weekend wasn't that a beautiful weekend? Sure hope uh, you know we save some of this nice weather for the fair. <laughs> uh, let's save it for a few more days of planting, and then you can have uh, whatever's <laughs> left over for. The I think. It sounds pretty pretty promising uh, for you this week, so maybe you should get it all in before uh, we really get some rain. And by the way, we should also make note that John is here in his official capacity. He even has his official, official Rice County Fair shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, you know, I figured uh, I'll just dress up for the occasion today. <laughs> A lot of people don't realize that planning for the fair starts maybe before even one fair finishes. You're already thinking about next year. And you're right there, you know. Uh, you start in the back of your mind thinking about what you're going to do next year when you're wrapping up the, the previous fair. And, uh, you know, you start making contacts and, and, and hopefully uh, acts and, and vendors and all that are available. And um, it's uh, a never-ending job. It really isn't. And you're probably even taking notes during the fair. When it's going on, this worked really well. Maybe this didn't work quite so well. Maybe we can do something a little bit differently. We need to think about this as a fair board and how we might do things differently next year. And exactly so. And, you know, um, you, want, you want to change up on some things, and it's all of a sudden you realize, you know what, this worked. Uh, why are we changing it? Maybe we just leave it like it is. And uh, and you go on, and you try new ideas, and um, um, just got some good ideas. I'm trying to make it more not only entertaining at the fair this year, but I'd like to put in some educational parts with the fair uh, just to educate the public, you know, what agriculture is all about, not only in Rice County, but, you know, throughout the uh, agricultural industry, you know, we, we need the farmer. And, and so we need to get our word out there to the, to the individuals that are coming to the fair is, you know, we need agriculture here today. Well, I think it's a great opportunity when you have all these people at the fair do a little educating about agriculture and how their food is produced, but at the same time while they think they're having fun. <laughs> exactly so. And, you know, even if you can just leave, uh, you know, when you got two or three people a day that go away with a different perspective on agriculture, I think you can accomplish your job. It was a nice addition here a few years ago when you kind of started our own little machinery hill, machinery end. <laughs> and then move the kids carnival back to the east end and we have a spot for some machinery real machinery on the west side and, and that's a good point because uh you know that was one thing that we kind of lacked at the fair is we really didn't have no specific area that we could uh call it a machinery hill or whatever you want to call it and i think that worked out real good and, and uh, i'm just so thankful for SEMA equipment and dave isaacson you know they bring in great great uh, exhibits and you know, and I've said this before, they're not there just promoting what they sell. I mean, they're promoting agriculture. And uh, with the way agriculture is changing nowadays, you know, what better way to ask somebody than, you know, the individual that sells the equipment, you know, how they're preserving the soil and, and, and uh, the, econ or the uh, environment. And also thanks to the Rice County Steam and Gas Engine for bring, bringing some of those older tractors so that uh, we can see how agriculture as has progressed, but John, we have to take a break what for the month. What does this mark? piece of equipment do, and why do you do it this way versus the way you did years ago? And, and with the landscape of agriculture changing, uh, you know, who better to explain it than somebody that uh, sells the equipment? And, and so uh, I'm thankful that they are there because, you know, there's a lot of comments that I hear of how well it's been explained to them, you know, why this piece of equipment is used. You mentioned before the break, too, about how during the fair you're always taking notes about what things we might want to change, what things we could maybe do better, and what things went really well. And if it isn't broke, don't fix it. One thing you must have on that list, a category of if, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, is the grandstand NTPA truck and tractor pole. Just leave that <laughs> on the. I always enjoy that. That's right. You know, and there are some staples that, you know, we we bring back to the county fair and I think people look forward to it year after year. Uh, the individuals that participate in the events uh, look after it year coming back year after year and uh, you're right, the NTPA tractor pull and 
truck and tractor pull. It's a great attraction, and people have a lot of fun, and it's exciting, and uh, people enjoy coming to see it. It's kind of fun, too, that we have some local participants in the, the big circuit with a certain Jack. And yes, Corey yes. And that crew. <laughs> That's right, and, and uh, I was informed that he will be there again this year, uh, hopefully. Um, you know, and a lot of it, uh, too, is these people break down just like uh, every other operation does, and, and so sometimes, you know, they're, everybody's all looking forward to it, and, you know, some, uh, something goes wrong with the engine, or and they can't run it, and, you know, you really can't blame them uh, for taking the chance of it causing further damage, so, uh, you know, it's just a, uh, the nature of the beast, and, and hopefully everything will be working for everybody, and we'll have a good show this year, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And what night is that? Sometimes be, it's been Friday night, sometimes it's been Saturday night. It's been Saturday night, and it'll be, it's Saturday night. Uh, you kind of have to go by where their schedule is, and where our fall, where our fair falls in on the dates, uh, you know, uh, they actually that week they pull Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and they you know on Saturday they end up at our fair. So there's two nights that they've pulled at other fairs or other events, and it's kind of a little circuit for them. And um, so you know they'll be coming to our fair, uh, having two nights of pulling under their belt. Well, hopefully they didn't hurt it too bad in those other nights. Mm -hmm. It's amazing talking to Doug, one of Jack's mechanics. How they can have something happen, and by the next night they can have the engine all torn apart, fixed, and put back together again. Amazing, isn't it? Just amazing with technology today, and uh, uh, you know, so it, it's it's a hobby for them, and it's probably an expensive hobby, and um, you know they enjoy doing it, and, and I'm glad that uh, they enjoy doing it because they sure put on a good show for us. It's always fun to watch. My favorite, I call them the smokers and the screamers. Mm -hmm. It looks like a tractor, kind of. At least the hood is, like, <laughs> I recognize. The rest, maybe not so much, but it's just fun to watch those girls go down the track. You know? Yeah, you know, and that's right. And, you know, the, the smoke and the and the fire that comes out of the exhaust, I mean, uh, that really uh, is a crowd pleaser, you know, and that's why people come. Sometimes we don't need to worry too much about skiers that night. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And you surely don't want to forget your earplugs at no. home either. I have earplugs. I'm down on the track because I always have the privilege of unhooking the trucks and the tractors from the sled. I have earplugs, and when they take off, I still put the hands over my ears. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's funny because the, the whole ground just shakes. I mean, you know, there's people that make comments, you know, that when some of these tractors take off, they can feel the vibrations in the seats. Um, one time I was leaning against the concrete barrier that we have there and one of the tractors started up and I mean you could just feel that vibration come right through the <laughs> concrete wall and it's just amazing. Uh, well for those folks that maybe aren't as excited about the smokers and the screamers as I am, what else is lined up now for the grandstand? Uh, it's going to start off on uh, Wednesday night. We have uh, an event. Uh, this is something that's new coming to the fair and we're still are working out the details. but. Uh, we're going to have a Battle of the Bands, what it's called, and uh, we're going to invite uh, amateur bands to come in, and they'll have a set amount of time that they'll be able to, to play their music, and uh, we'll come up with some prizes, and uh, we're all we're working on that right now. We're going to try and get things finalized uh, tonight at a board meeting, uh, you know, and, and get it out there, and they'll be able to find out all the information on the County Fair website. We'll have it out there. And, uh, you know, they'll be able to call into the office and we'll answer any questions we have to that. But we're really looking forward to that. It's a new event, and uh, we've talked about it for a number of years now, and we're going to give it a try this year. And, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, it's a success and uh, we can just build off of it from there. It would be fun to get a little rivalry going between some of the bands in the different communities or surrounding counties, too. Exactly so. And, you know, it's not, and, you know, some... A little bit of competition between groups is fine, but you know it's going to be a way that uh, somebody that's looking to get started, maybe this is one of the things that'll help them get started, to kind of push them over the edge and, and, and get them going. Uh, so I'm looking forward to it, and, and uh, I hope that it's got a lot of interest out there, and people come in and enjoy it, and the musicians uh, come and they have a good time, and uh, hopefully it's uh, something that they can look back on and say, hey, you know, this is where we started. 
and start this isn't like just fair. high school bands. It could be a community band. It could be somebody that just wanted to put a few people together and go and compete then. It is. Uh, what what, what are we going to consist of is um, it has to consist of uh, three or more individuals. Uh, obviously, you want a drummer, a uh, guitar, and a lead vocalist. Uh, that's And then it can grow from there. Uh, but, you know, um, yeah, I think I'm looking forward to it, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So that's Tuesday night. That that's opening, Wednesday night. Or Wednesday night. Uh, Thursday night we'll have our enduro races. Uh, you know, that's always a fun time uh, and a lot of excitement there. And uh, Friday night um, we have our bull riding coming back. And uh, this year we have a new bull riding company coming back. The, present, the former bull uh, riding company that was with us uh, just... Uh, the dates didn't work out for us, so we were fortunate to uh, bring in another bull riding company. So we're looking forward to having a new bull riding company. Uh, years ago, we did have them at the fair. Uh, they did a real good job, so we have them coming back. It's the Great Frontier Bull Riding Company. So um, I think they're going to put on a great show for us. And they're at other county fairs around us, so they kind of like that. You know, they're able to kind of bundle up a package, and, and uh, you know, they have several different fairs that they're going to be at around the area here. And so. they like to do that, come to an area and maybe spend three or four weeks mm -hmm. and do a number of... Exactly so, and then that way, you know, uh, if they can make it, that they can leave some of the equipment and they don't have to haul it back and forth home, you know, that's a big plus for them. And so, uh, you're right, you know, they like that when they can uh, have a number of fairs right in a row. Uh, and then, looking forward to it, and we'll have our uh, Kids Day Entertainment again at the intermission. Uh, we'll have little... Uh, events out there for the kids and that's going to be our main kids day giveaway where we'll give away our prizes um, that was a huge uh, success last year for us and i think the individuals liked it you know they were had something to do you know during the intermission and uh, it was entertaining and so uh, we're going to do that again this year um, saturday night of course we talked about it our truck and tractor pull uh, always a big night at the at the fair and then Sunday this year, uh, we're going to start our demolition derby earlier in the afternoon. Um, and so we're looking forward to that demolition derby on Sunday. What time on Sunday afternoon does that start? We're going to start the demolition derby at uh, 4.30. Then it doesn't get quite so late for people that have to get up and go to work the next day. Exactly so. And, and uh, then that gives uh, them one last chance to walk through the fair and do one last ride if they want to do one last ride or grab that last... Uh, hot dog or cheese curd or, or whatever is out there, you know, and, and everything's all good out there. So, uh, you know, one last time to go out and buy something and take it home. Well, and then we haven't mentioned Tuesday night. There's no grandstand performance Tuesday night. That's basically the Rice County Fair Queen Contest. Then? That's a Queen Contest. Uh, you know, that's always a big night. You know, that kind of kicks off our fair, uh, the Queen Contest, and it's always uh, an entertaining event to watch and uh, you know these girls spend a lot of time uh, getting ready and and uh, going through all the uh, process of becoming a fair queen and they have a lot of fun doing it and they enjoy doing it and uh, so yeah it's a great way to kick off the uh, Rice County Fair. I haven't talked to Kathy Cap recently but I assume that she's still taking applications for the Rice County Fair Queen? Oh I'm sure she is and, and um, I'm sure she'll be taking it uh, for several several weeks yet, I'm sure way into into June, uh, she usually takes uh, applications. So uh, probably it's just getting going now. And you know, and and right now, you know, all the gals are busy in school, and and uh, so they probably it's not on their front burner. Yeah. But I'm sure once school is out or near out, uh, you know, they'll be getting excited about it, and they'll start signing up. And um, it's it's a great time. I'm, I encourage all the young girls that are out there, you know, give it a try. It's, it's a lot of fun and uh, see where it can go. You would think that Kathy would bring my treats because I remembered the fair, to bring up the Fair Queen contest. So, you know, you'd think she'd bring a couple treats by for us, wouldn't you? Well, you know, we'll have to talk to her about that. I'm sure she's busy. Oh, and, by the uh, way, but she had a little secret. You said you had a fair board meeting tonight? Yes. Today is Kathy Cat's birthday. It is. Yes. Oh, okay. I didn't tell you that though, okay. but you can harass her tonight at the fair board meeting. That would be fine. I'll try. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to think of something. <laughs> One of the other things I wanted to make sure we mentioned uh, was the topic of AM Minnesota here a week or two ago. 
the Rice County Agriculture Hall of Fame and those nomination forms. Exactly so, you know, uh, get those forms filled out if you know of somebody that, uh, that's deserving to win, um, fill out that application. You know, and that's how, I just want to kind of reiterate that is that's how the process works is somebody has to be nominated. And, uh, you know, that search committee, they just don't pick names of individuals. I mean, they are actually nominated and, and you know, people need to do that. If you know of somebody that's deserving of this uh, award, you know, please let us know so we can, you know, get them in the process of, you know, getting their names out there and, and having that search committee consider them because uh, there's a lot of individuals out there that deserve to be in this Hall of Fame and, and we need to know about them. And the nomination forms are on the Rice County Fair website. I have a few here at the studio. You can talk to Art Manson over at the Reliance Bank in Faribault. Exactly so. Exactly so. So there should be uh, plenty of resources to, to go out and get that application. It's turned into such a nice event. Another classic example of county fair is at its best, but it's jointly sponsored by the Rice County Fair Board the Fairville Chamber of Commerce Agribusiness Committee, the Rice County Farm Bureau stepped up along with the corn and soybean growers, the pork producers, and the ADA to serve a breakfast for everyone that wants to come to the ceremony that Wednesday morning. It just turned into a really nice event. Yeah, you're right, it has, and, and we look forward to having that every year. And it is a nice event. Uh, it's a time when, uh, you know, let's face it, everybody is so busy in their lives now, today's, and, uh, you know, just a great way to, to start off the morning and come out and have breakfast. You can have breakfast with individuals that you probably haven't seen for a while. And and uh, just to, you know, sit and reminisce and talk about uh, life in general or what farming was like or, you know, what worked or, you know, even talk about uh, what's going on in today's farming. And so it's just a great time for people to come out and a great opportunity to take advantage of this uh, and it's come out and it's an enjoyable day and uh, what better way to spend it at the fair. Yep, come there for breakfast in the program and then spend the rest of the day at the fair. <laughs> exactly so, exactly so. And um, you know, we're just so fortunate that we did have some individuals that stepped forward and made this uh, award possible. And not only Doug Gilbertson with the nearest Rand Agri Center that is sponsoring it, but exactly not to mention so. Doug too. Exactly so. so you know, we're just thankful that they started it up, and not only for starting it up, but, you know, continued with it and, you know, take it and manage it and, and uh, keep it going from year to year. It, it and because of Doug's sponsorship, then the nice pictures and plaques can be on permanent display. Exactly so, exactly so. And, uh, you know, we made a new wall for that in our, our Gillen building, you know. We have a nice wall set up for that. and. Uh, so, uh, yeah, come on out during the fair and, and take a look at that. I know, you know, we probably talk about it uh, a lot, but this is when we need to talk about it because we need to get people excited about it because we need those applications filled out. And we can't go through the entire list, but it is really individuals and businesses that have sponsorships to different activities at the Rice County Fair. Boy, if you wouldn't have that, you wouldn't have much in the way of income to to pay for the free acts and all those things that you need to do. Yes, uh, you know, we're just so thankful for the individuals that do help uh, sponsor the fair and make donations. And and uh, some are big, some are small, and, and uh, we're just thankful we get what we can get. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue this because it's, it's it, it takes a lot to put on the county fair and without the help of the, a lot of these businesses, you know, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that we do at the fair. And a lot of volunteers in addition to just the fair board. That's right. You know, that week of the fair, uh, you know, 99% of that fair is put on by volunteers. And I uh, 99.9%, .9%, I would say. <laughs> and uh, so uh, everybody gets comes out and they help and they make it a huge success. And, uh, you know, we're just so thankful that we have all these individuals that help. And so many other individuals that have a part of it, like the Faribault Police Department and Sheriff Troy Dunn with the, the Sheriff's Office that help with all of the other things that you need to have there when you have a large gathering of people. Exactly so. You know, the, the Faribault Police Department plays a big role in, in crowd control and just having a presence there. The Sheriff's Department uh, plays a big major role. You know, they bring in their command center. They serve as our uh, first aid station. 
and uh, we're just so fortunate that uh, you know we have such cooperation. Uh, the Morristown Fire Department comes out uh, during the grandstand. Uh, they've come out for many years now and, and supplied uh, the firemen and the fire truck, uh, you know, in case there is a uh, problem out there. And, uh, you know, there's just so many individuals and so many organizations that, that do volunteer. And, and, you know, I can't say enough that how grateful we are that they continue on doing this. We got to mention the paramedics and was it? North Ambulance, isn't exactly it? Exactly so. North Ambulance comes out and, um, you know, they do a great job. Uh, a lot of times, you know, thankfully, uh, we've never had no major, major uh, injuries out there. But, uh, you know, you never know how that guy riding the bull is going to fly off that bull. Or just a, a visitor there that exactly. has a heart attack or some sort of medical emergency. So exactly. that was that last year? when uh, someone just passed out of dehydration in the infield before the truck and tractor pull. Exactly. And so they got the person stabilized, stayed in the cool ambulance, mm -hmm. but they couldn't take him to the emergency room because it wasn't the emergency until another ambulance was there. Exactly. So uh, all the rules and things that uh, go on behind the scenes, most of us don't have any idea. Exactly. But you know, what's comforting to know is that, you know, you will you never do want any of these incidents to happen but it's comforting to know that when they do happen uh, we know that uh, we can take care of it and there's individuals out there and it's uh, you know and somebody's thought of a plan exactly so, uh, so and, and, and our plan is working we only have a couple minutes left John but we didn't even get to all the free entertainment and all the other things going on but there'll be another AM Minnesota program but a good place to stay up to speed on it is the Rice County Fair website exactly so and, and you know, as uh, things are scheduled and it's all starting to come together and, and you know, as soon as we get it scheduled, it, it goes out on the website and, uh, you know, I got a gal that, uh, uh, Tara, Trip, uh, I'm sorry, Tara Langevin. Uh, yeah, I still call her Tara Trip. too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that great that, you know, people started off in, in... But that's what makes it go. Different people with different talents that yeah. can step up and do a little volunteering to help the fair. Exactly so, and we're so grateful that she does does this for us and you know she's a 4-H alumni from Rice County and she grew up in Rice County and she knows what it's all about and so uh, you know it's just a, it's a great uh, way to uh, just keep contributing to the fair. And probably match it too the Rice County Board of Commissioners that always help with the fair in terms of some financial support to help keep up all those buildings. Exactly so and, and uh, you know uh, budgets are tight this year and, and we're just grateful that uh, we do get what we get from the county commissioners, and we hope that continues. And uh, you know, it's just a great way that the county works together. You know, everybody from the county is striving for for it to be a success. Went snooping again here about a week and a half ago. Drove home through the Rice County Fair as the the lawn and everything was greening up. But you must have a little bit of maintenance to do before the fair. But boy, I thought things looked pretty good already. You know, we went through the winter real well, uh, outside of a few uh, tire tracks that are. Uh, in the green areas, uh, we'll be filling those in and, and taking care of that. But you know, we did uh, survive the winter, and you know, everything looks in great shape. And we're just going to keep working to get it looking good for the fair. July what? July 19th through the 24th. I don't have to remember that. That's why I know you. Yeah, <laughs> mark Thanks, your calendars. Jeff. We'll look forward to talking to you again soon. And it's great to be here, Jerry. Thanks much. John Dvorak, the manager of the Rice County Fair. The news from ABC is on the way. 55 degrees and cloudy skies.